Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today's April 24th, 2018, and this is our episode number 294. Today we're doing starting a one-year review of Tarpon Investimentos. If you just landed on this random episode, if if you haven't watched any past episodes, what we do is we look at randomly selected companies mostly from traded in Brazil. I avoid financial companies, banks, because I don't know how to value them. Uh, I don't understand the role of debt uh, in banks, and I haven't yet uh, given it uh, the effort that it would need there. But all the other companies, we look and we filter them with the idea of getting the very best ideas for for actually for investing for going long so i'm not going short companies it's very very uh down to the essentials there long term value no leverage so basic investment and tarpon was actually the very first company that was randomly selected that i ended up recommending as an investment as a matter of fact, uh, it was randomly selected, but at the time I did the videos, I was already invested in Tapo. Had not been invested for a very long time. I think uh, I bought my first shares of Tapo about a year and a half ago, if that. <clears throat> but that's it. So I have a portfolio of five companies right now, or let's say five, a 4.3, because the fifth company is a, a relatively small as a position, and, but Tapon, no, Tapon is actually uh, uh, one of the, the, the companies I put more money into, it's one of the, the, the large positions in terms of uh, the capital. So great, uh, a little over a year and a, a week, uh, actually a year and a week later, we come back to Tapon and we see, we value it again, we, we, we see what's going on. And um, essentially, I would have I would t tell you if I had sold the company, haven't sold a share. But um, yeah, so we do the work again. I think it's very important to tell you and that you know because there's this in the value investment uh, area. There's a lot of talk like. You know, I buy and I forget. I never look at price. You know, I, I only look, you know. Even Warren Buffett says, I buy as if the stock market would be closed for the next five years and I couldn't trade it. So I buy to hold, which is a great statement, but that doesn't mean I don't look at the price. You know, I think I looked at the price almost every session, sometimes a couple of times a session, three times a session. Why not? But... To me, that didn't make me go crazy or sell in desperation or anything of the sort. So I think you have to know yourself, uh, your personality. And I, more and more, I, I know that I don't have that uh, which would be a downside, which would be a vulnerability. I don't have that, that desperation in terms of, oh my God, this is down, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent. And sell based only on that. I, I really don't because I've been through that many times now. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I just have that uh, neutrality there about that. Perhaps because it, it's a, a personality trait. Perhaps it's because I read so much. I kind of uh, imbibed the gospel of Ben Graham and, and Warren Buffett for many years before even buying one share so it was like reading as a as a you know just out of curiosity because i ba basically didn't have any money to invest anyway but and i'm talking about that because stock has been quite the, the roller coaster uh, so i won't talk about that in detail right now but we'll get to that so what I wanted to start with in terms of the actual analysis is the fundamentals, okay? Same thing we do every time. That if they've been making a profit, if they've been generating cash flow. So begin from the beginning. So 
I already have the numbers for 2017, which are the latest publicly divulged numbers. And so the uh, TAPON continues with no debt, which is only fair if you consider that TAPON is a... Uh, they are a fund, right? They are uh, traded in, in the stock market, but they themselves uh, are a set of investment funds. So they get money from their investors in advance. So it would be strange we would be kind of wary if they had were carrying debt. It happens, but then we get wary. Great. So it, their numbers are, are strange in a sense because if you see their net equity, it's 53 million. And then you see them trading, you know, 4 billion reais uh, every once in a while. So their net equity is that of a very small company that happens to to handle a lot of money. That's basically what I understand happens at Tapo. So though they are a few people, I don't know, 10, 20 people there, and uh, an office, and, and they are asset light, you know, they have no power plant, nothing of the sort. So in that sense, these numbers here, uh, once we do the basic sanity check, they don't mean very much. So once we know that they're not carrying a lot of debt, uh, and they're even staying asset light here, that's okay. We move forward. So they have debt to equity of zero and liabilities to equity of zero point twenty three, even for um, an equity that's tiny. Okay. So at the end of twenty seventeen, they had a current ratio of almost six, which is exceedingly safe. So, you know, in those uh, simplistic terms, we are fine here. They posted earnings of 9 million, which are the third worst in the last 10 years, actually in the last 11 years. We had a, a negative year in 2008, uh, a worse year in 2016. Yeah, but all the other years were better than 2017. We'll talk about that, but it was actually surprising to me that they were able to show a profit here, to tell you the, the truth. I think it uh, is a testament to their uh, low-cost structure, really. Uh, so free cash flow, not good. Good. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what happens here uh, with um, Google Spreadsheet. I think this number is maybe zero, okay? But uh, I, I lost confidence because they they were rounding numbers between zero and nine to zero sometimes. But I think this was actually zero. Anyway, they posted po uh, positive free cash flow here also, which given this the 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 macro situation for them uh, was a bit surprising to me and I was glad there. So given that uh, the average uh, inflation adjusted uh, earnings is 61 million over the last 10 years, 30 million over the last five years. So this is interesting because you see the last five years have been twice as bad or half as good, same thing, uh, as the the overall 10 years. Therefore, actually, this last block of five years was four times as bad as the other block there. Uh, and since I've been following Tapu uh, quite a bit, I, I can tell you why. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into that a little later. And uh, free cash flow, also the block of 10 years better than the block of five. So, but not by quite as much. Uh, I think we should uh, update the market cap. So it's been quite a ride. So at some time early 2017, we can see that the market cap was uh, of 2,002 million. 
And um, actually, I was starting to record this very episode yesterday, last uh, in the morning, early morning. And I had I couldn't finish it. You know, my my daughter came in the room and started talking to me, and then we had to leave. Uh, but from in twenty four hours, Tapo moved almost thirty percent up from uh, the previous day. So Tapo. So this is one of those rare occurrences, but it happened. So here you go. It went up 28.97% last session. So I was going to start this analysis. I wasn't going to finish it anyway. Uh, but, you know, in a session, went up by this much. So the market cap right now is at 143. As you can see here, it's up by almost 40% since the last time I, I wrote this here. But still down by 30% from around here. And uh, a huge roller coaster in between, I can tell you. Great. So what about the multiples? So the multiples here continue to be among the very best multiples in the stock market. So a P10 of 2.36 over 10 years. In simplistic terms, this would mean we have this kind of uh, rule of thumb uh, math here. So you, when you want to see the expected rate of return per year, uh, assuming that the conditions will remain the same uh, over you know the next 10 years or, or the infinite theoretical time, you, you do something very simple. 100 divided by 2.36. So it's as if you are expecting a rate of return per year of 42%. 42%. So if you've studied, if you've read about this, you know that this, you know, year in and year out, this is, uh, if this were guaranteed, this is certainty of becoming uh, a billionaire. And it's actually impossible over the long term. Again, if you consider the career of the best investor of the 20th, 20th century, Warren Buffett, he has maintained a, a compound uh, return of about 20% per year. So this would be more than twice. So he can imagine how hard it is to even find situations like this, uh, especially ones that actually turn out to, to, to happen. Great. Another thing here is that sometimes you see profits that are that look really attractive, but the free cash flow looks much worse. Not here. Here the free cash flow is actually better than the profits. So if you do that, it's going to be a little better even. 100 divided by 2.27. 44%. Even if you consider the worst number, so if you say, okay, it's going to stay like it stayed over the next five years. Cool. 100 divided by 4.77. 21%. Better than Warren Buffett. So if you do 100 by, divided by 3.58, 30%. Heck of a lot better than Warren Buffett. So even if you consider, okay, what if it stays just like last year, 9? So it, it right now it costs 143 divided by 9. Actually, 9 divided by 143. So it's 6.3%. Even in this terrible year, the return is even with our basic interest rate in Brazil right now. So one of the worst years in, in TAPO, still on par with uh, the basic interest rate. So considering those basic things that, that are just you know, scratching the surface of an analysis, TAPO still feels like a, 
like a very good idea of, of buying Tapon. Okay. Uh, if you've reached this point, what I can tell you is watch our first uh, round of analysis of Tapon. We have a few episodes on it. Uh, it it's, you know, do your search. I'm sorry, I should have the, the episodes. But uh, just search on YouTube, Naive Investor, Tapo Investments. And you will see what I, I went through in terms of analyzing Tapo. Now we will do very similar things, but with the optics of today. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, it could have been that looking at the very fundamentals here would have made Tapo uh, now uh, not an investment idea any longer. So, you know, maybe we show, you know, their debt skyrocketed or, uh, you know, they turned, you know, a second, third year in a row of, of losses. Things like that would have made Tapo uh, a sell. Okay. Uh, no, it's, that's not the case. Tapon is a uh, continue to uh, to uh, to learn about, continue to update information about. So again, I am still bought on Tapon, still a partner. It's been only a year and a half. It's nothing. Uh, so on our next episode, we'll come back to Tapon and we'll look at Tapon from more uh, perspectives. Probably look at ownership if something changed there, and uh, there's a lot to talk about. I just want to cut it here, so we can uh, make it, you know, with some uh, sense per episode. So that said, thank you very much. Uh, if you've made this far in the video, uh, you're a candidate to be a subscriber for sure. Uh, so consider uh, subscribing to our channel. Uh, also, we do have 293 more episodes of Naive Investor, which I invite you to watch. And of course, I invite you to watch our future episodes just as well. Uh, as I always ask, uh, if you have questions, suggestions, criticism, and particularly if you've spotted mistakes in the analysis, leave a comment and I'll write you back as soon as I can. Have a great day. Bye-bye.